We're back with the McIlvaney Intelligence Advisor. And we're back with the McIlvaney Intelligence Advisor. And we're on to part two. Structural Pliancy by Gonzalo Lira. A lot of people, and I am one of them, claim that personal and business freedoms are being eroded as ever before. They show as evidence the rollback of civil liberties, the overregulation of business, the insistence on compliance by the various security agencies with every little rule, no matter how trivial, in short, the overregulation of American life. They are right. The U.S. government is guilty of overregulating individuals and businesses, egregiously so. On the other hand, a lot of other people, and I am one of them too, claim that certain persons and corporations act lawlessly as never before. They show as evidence the abuses of power of those in leadership, be it business, government, the military, or the intelligence security apparatus, and they insist that something has to be done about it. Some regulations have to be imposed. They are also right. The U.S. government is just as guilty as of under-regulating certain individuals and businesses egregiously so. Part A. Too much, too little, too bad. How can they both be right? How can it be that the US government seems to be over-regulating our lives, our businesses, and our institutions, yet at the same time under-regulating certain people, certain businesses, certain institutions? How can it be that some people some businesses, some institutions are getting away with murder, in some cases literally, while most of us are under the yoke of ex excessive, dishonest, petty, and trivial rules and regulations that either serve no purpose or act actively pervert the welfare of our society. Simple. Structural pliancy. Let me explain. It's no trick at all to find instances where the current regulatory environment is so recalcitrant, so bloody-minded, so pig-headed, that it's a miracle that America is able to exist as a functioning society at all. Rather than pick a particular, I'll just point to a nightmare most of us have to deal with at least a few times a year. The security checkpoints manned by TSA personnel at all of the airports of America. The regulations here are as rigid as a steel rod, yet at the same time as arbitrary and pointless as, actually, I can't think of a simile to quite capture the sheer insanity of the TSA security protocols at the airports. The insanity of those protocols are uniquely their own. We all know the drill. You wait in an, in an interminable line and then Finally, when it's your turn, you take off your shoes, you surrender all liquid containers with more than 100 milliliters of fluid, you let your carry-on bags go through a metal detector, and then, often as not, be searched manually again, while you pass through a metal detector and, and a body scammer, scanner that is streaming who knows what kind of nasty radiation at your body. Only after you've been dosed with radiation and humiliated good and proper, are you then allowed into the boarding gate, as if traveling in a free country were a privilege rather than a right? It doesn't matter if you're an elderly grandmother in a wheelchair. You have to walk through the metal detector and stand in the body scanner. It doesn't matter if you're a five-year-old girl. You're going to get groped just this side of sexual assault if you refuse to go through the, the body scanners. We have heard so many countless horror stories that there's no need to enumerate any more of this lack of sense. I mean, come on, is a five-year-old child really going to sur surreptuously carry plastic explosives and an Uzi submachine gun on onto a plane? It's not the lack, only the lack of discernment on uh, the part of TSA workers at the airport. It's a failure of imagination in the standing rules, the ridiculousness of so many of the rules and regulations, which add a layer of hassle and difficulty to the process, yet serve no useful purpose. Consider the TSA's 100 milligram uh, limit on fluids. 
100 milligram uh, milliliter rule was uh, designed to prevent a chemical explosive from being carried on board an airplane and then blowing it up. Originally, it was the three ounce rule, which is 88 milliliters. But in Europe and Asia, where the metric system is in place, they naturally have containers that are 100 milliliters, which is 3.38 uh, fluid ounces. Therefore, the TSA was forcing individuals to throw away all sorts of expensive perfumes and lotions which came in the 100 milliliter bottles, which of course made them furious, all because of 0.38 of an ounce. So they changed it to 100 milliliters. Quite the victory. But even so, you can carry as many 100 milliliter bottles as you'd like, which therefore defeats the entire purpose of preventing someone from carrying on board the ingredients to mix a bomb in midair. And what's to stop some prospective terrorists from carrying a half dozen 100 milliliter bottles with all the makings of a bomb? Will they have the wherewithal to find the chemical ingredients to make a bomb, but lack the smarts to put the ingredients into several small little bottles? Please. The individual bottle rule is so stupid. A mere ounce of nitroglycerin with an ounce with an added acetone desensitizer mixed at 30% would look and smell like nail polish. Yet when thrown at a wall and thereby detonated, the shock wave would punch a hole in the fuselage of any commercial plane. Don't get the wrong idea about me. I cribbed this info from Wikipedia. Anyway, I'm already on the Homeland Security watch list. I'll explain why in a moment. Well, aren't most of us. Part B. It's about judgment, stupid. In short, this regulation is pointless, and it is not atypical. Businesses and industries all across America are burdened with regulations that make no sense, just like the TSA protocols make absolutely no sense. In every industry in America, there are stupid rules and regulations identical to the 100 milliliter fluid rule. Rules and regulations uh, imposed from Washington without any regard for the practical realities on the ground. Rules and regulations this in life difficult for no other reason than stupidity. Notice, I am not against stupid. Notice, I am against stupid regulations. But I am not against regulations per se. On the contrary, only a fool would say that we do not need regulations. For instance, traffic lights are regulations of the free flow of automobiles. Who in their right mind would say we ought to eliminate all traffic lights in all the major cities of America because they infringe on our innate liberty to drive wherever we want? Nobody other than an idiot. As a thinking man's conservative, I recognize that government regulations are necessary for two reasons. One, to organize the relationship between any two entities in our society so that dealings are one and uh, one another, free, easy, efficient, and honest, and two, safeguard the weak, the unaware, and the general society from the actions of any individual person or entity who might seek their own benefit at the expense of inflicting harm on others. In short, government regulations ought to be in place to safeguard us, the citizens of the United States. They should not be in place so as to imprison us which is increasingly becoming the case. Since we must have rules and regulations in order to have a workable society, then these regulations have to be based on judgment. Regulation sake is of no help at all. On like the hundred will uh, say, so much of the regulations which we are living under give the illusion of safety without make, actually making anything, anyone any safer. Think about it, folks. That's the conclusion.